Welcome back to Code Time. This is episode seven of using Firebase and Vue.js to create interactive prototypes. In this episode, we're going to cover how to add Tailwind to a project and style it. Tailwind is a utility-based CSS framework which allows us to very quickly and rapidly prototype some visuals onto our website. So to get started with that, I'm going to go to uh, Tailwind CSS. We have a couple, uh, I think we're up to three or four now uh, series here on Code Time to talk about Tailwind. So if you just want to see what we're doing with Tailwind, uh, check that out. Uh, and the people who are, are working on Tailwind doing a fantastic job. It is by far my favorite CSS framework to work with. So to get started with that, um, we're going to click on installation and we're going to grab the CDN for it. So there's the CDN. We'll scroll to the top and we'll load that un right underneath the title tag. And while we're there, it says document. Let's change this to something like a uh, cat app because this is all about our cats and we can manage our cats in here. All right, we, once we have that, we're ready to kind of just go in here and write some classes. Now, uh, I'm not gonna show you how to use Tailwind and, and through the docs as there are video series here on Code Time for that. I'm gonna show you like just jumping in there and styling it. So if we refresh this, you can immediately see what it looks like. So when we added Tailwind, it essentially reset our page and our page looks like this now. If I jump over to my HTML here, I can start to add a couple of classes to make it look a little nicer. So to get started, I'd like to take this code here, which is the add cat, and I'd like to put this in a modal. I'm gonna leave a comment here, I'll just command forward slash and say, um, put this in modal. You could call that a pop-up too. And then here in the form code, I'd like this to, I think be, instead of um, them on their own line, or, or them on the same line, I'd like to put them on their own line. So they're all sort of gonna be stacked on top of each other. I think that'll be easier to work with. I'll also like to put in some label tags so that you actually know what you're supposed to be filling in. I think that would be very helpful as well. So maybe we'll do something with an edit button so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't show an input field by default. You have to click edit to do it. Let's start with the modal code so, and some container code. So to get started here, I'm going to take uh, the background edge. Let's start in the body tag. And I'll say class bg-gray-light. And that's going to make a light background in here. So there's our lighter background. Then on ID of app here, we can say class and we could set something up like with one fourth and now it's taking them with one fourth. And then I could say MX auto and that would center it. Uh, now one fourth might be too aggressive. Maybe we'll do something like one half and that gives us something like that. Depends on how we want to do it. We're doing this on the fly. So we'll say BG white and then I'll add a shadow to it. So I'm going to say something like uh, BG uh, how do we do this? Shadow hyphen LG. So we have a large shadow on our element here. Cool. So that's our base. We'll say MT, maybe MT hyphen eight. So move it down some and we'll put some padding on it. So PX hyphen eight. So padding all around or padding on the right and left. We'll say padding on the top and bottom and left and right. So this is padding everywhere. Then I'd like to maybe round it. So I'll say around it. And that'll round these corners here a little bit. Then where it says create cats, I'm gonna change that to just name it cat app. And that's our cat app. I'd like to move the margins on the bottom of that. So I'll say margin bottom eight, and that'll move it down some. All right, the next thing I wanna do is that create modal. So when I click on this like add new cat button, instead of just directly making the new ones, I need to make some sort of plus button and maybe with a little bit of animation as well. Okay, so to do that, let's uh, go in here and create a button. And this button needs a couple classes. So I'll say class, and we'll give it a BG hyphen green. And then I'll set up the hover state while I'm at it. So I'll say BG hyphen green hyphen dark. Our text is gonna be white inside of it. 
and I want it to be completely round. So I'll say rounded hyphen full. I'll give it a width of, let's say 12. That might not be big enough, but let's see how it looks. And a height of 12. And just so we can see what it looks like, I'll just throw a plus in here. That's looking pretty good actually. I'll give it a shadow of LG. So it kind of pops off the screen a little bit. There we go. And then I'd like to position this maybe like at the bottom corner here so that you can click on this and you can add a new one. That's just what I'm going with the style. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna say absolute, absolute, all right. And then we'll say pin at the bottom and pin at the left. So that should pin it at the bottom left. Uh, right, actually I was saying right. It's over here now, but I want it to be over here. So I need to put relative on the parent div. So here's our parent div. We'll say relative positioning. Now absolute elements are relative to that. Now that's not exactly where I want it. I need to move it down some. So to move it down some, I'm going to say MB, I'll do negative margin bottom hyphen eight. And that'll move it down some, and then we'll do the same way on the right. So negative margin right eight and that'll move it down there now eight's probably too much so let's go with four and refresh and we now have a little button that we can click and it's going to um open up our modal or something like that okay so let's create that modal and i don't really like the shadows on this it's a little bit much i'll just say shadow and it gives it a lighter shadow cool so the next thing I need to do is create this modal. And we want to put this code in the modal. So we'll create it. I'll say div and grab the div here and put it inside this. Tab these things over. And then we'll give this a class. And I want to give this a class of uh, h hyphen screen and with screen. And then I need to position this absolute. So I'll say absolute and we'll pin top and pin left. I know that's default, but I just sort of a habit of mine to do this. Now this element, um, this is our first issue here, right? If we position this absolute, it's going to be here because we positioned this element absolute and it's inside of this div ID of app. So to get around that, I'm going to take the div ID of app and say app and then bring it outside. So that way I'm not actually applying anything to it. That allows me to take this modal code and take it outside of the container. Note the, or not the container, this the sort of element here, this white sort of style. So now if I do that uh, and save and refresh this, you'll see that this is by itself out here. Let's format this a little bit more. I'm gonna say that I'm not using a style sheet, so I'm just gonna do a quick little bit of inline style. I could throw a style sheet on here, it wouldn't be a problem, uh, or I can make a view component or whatever I was going to do. Uh, but for just for the purposes of this, I'll do it sort of the easy way. I'm gonna say background color RGBA, and then I'm gonna go with zero, 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 and then 0 0.8, maybe 0 0.7 will be enough. And now if we refresh, you can see we have that sort of shadowy smoke color. And, um, but if I was doing this in production for a real site, I'd probably make a class called BG hyphen smoke. And I could always extend tailwind by compiling it. So there's my uh, sort of code. I need to do the same kind of thing I did before on this system. So to do that, I'll go into the form code and I could probably just use this form code or I could wrap it in another div. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna wrap it in another div. I like that idea. So then in here, I can say BG white. And then I'm gonna say this is width one third. It's a little bit smaller than I think we did the one half. And then I want this to be rounded as well. And let's see what it looks like. It looks like that right now. I want this to be flex and then flex wrap. So our elements inside will wrap down as we do it. You'll see why that is relevant as we get to these elements. I might not have to actually, because I'm gonna probably make these all with full. 
let's style this a little as well. So I'll say PX hyphen, um, well, maybe we can do four here, and that's four on right and left. I'm gonna do that eight everywhere, actually. So there's our pop-up, and then inside of this, let's put an H2 that says something like create new cat. And there's create new cat. I can say class, margin bottom is four, and that'll give us a little bit of space. And now we can style these input fields. So we have this add new cat, that's our button. We can style that like a button. So we'll say rounded hyphen full, and we'll spell rounded correctly, there we go. And then BG hyphen green, we'll keep with that same color scheme, text hyphen white, uh, padding, yeah, padding of right and left maybe of eight, and padding Y maybe a four. Let's refresh this and now we can see that. That's a bit much, so we'll say PY2, let's say. And this we can say PY4. That's pretty good. I want my font to be bold for that, so we'll say bold for that button. And that's looking pretty good. I'd like to break this down now so it's on its own line by saying, putting it in a div, giving this div a class of width hyphen full. Now that has its own line, and I can set up margin top four on it to move it down a little bit. Okay, we need to center this modal. So to center this modal, we have a couple choices. Because this is absolute, we could say something like, let's try this. We could say flex on that, and then we could say something like items hyphen center, and that will center this vertically, and then say justify hyphen center, and that will center this horizontally. So now if my screen's like this, it'll pop up exactly in the middle of the screen. Now we need to do our input fields. So let's select this input tag. I'll press Command D on my keyboard a couple times to select multiple ones. And how do we want to style these? I want to style them maybe not with borders, but a, a light background color of gray. So I'm going to go with the lightest that I can do with Tailwind. And I refresh this. You can see just a little bit there. And then I think this is, I don't use this one very often. I believe it's inset. Let's see what that looks like. Ah, it's not inset. Skip it. Um, if we just did shadow, yeah, shadow's on the outside. We could look this up again with anything. I'm just curious. There's our box shadows and it's shadow inner. I'm getting shadow and inset and inner mixed up. So now I have shadow inner and I get a little bit of shadow in those input fields. Each of these, I want them to go all the way across the screen, or all the way across the modal space, so they're width full. I want to put a little bit of padding all around on them, so I'll say P2 on them. And then a little bit on the bottom of like maybe margin bottom one, so they kind of separate just, just enough. That's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. I need to be able to close this, so maybe an X here, or maybe something where I can click off. Maybe I'll do both. So to do both here, uh, and I need to set up, of course, the view code to make the modal. To do both here, I'm gonna set up a button, and then I'm just gonna say close. And then I'll style it, kind of similar to what I did here, but I'm gonna make it a gray button. So this is gray hyphen light. And then maybe I'll change its text color to black, just so we can see it a little bit better. Or better yet, instead of putting the BG gray on it, and the bold will have a little bit of contrast by just setting it like that. I kind of like the bold actually still on there. So now I can close here or I can add new cat here. Now when you see when I click on that, it doesn't look like a button. Of course, I could switch this over to a button or I could say uh, cursor, cursor hyphen pointer. Now if I refresh this, it looks like a little button here. I can click it. All right, so now I can come in here and say, Frank, uh, color is green, let's say, and size is skinny. And then you can add it, and you can see it added it, but it didn't close this, so that didn't work for us. So now we need to set up some code to do that. All right, let's scroll down to our code here and set up our data here, and we'll set up one called modal. And modal is equal to false by default, all right? Then we can say, I'll scroll up to where we create the modal, and we'll say v hyphen if modal, 
that means modal's true, then it's gonna show. So now if we refresh this page, you'll see that the modal doesn't show. If I click the plus, the modal should show, but we didn't write anything to create the modal, like pop it up. So we need to do that. So let's go over here and we'll say at click is equal to, and I'm gonna say this modal show. Now you could turn this into a toggle and say something like, uh, what do we wanna call that? Modal button. I don't know, modal button's probably not the best name right now. Uh, I'll just do it as a default. Uh, we'll just say modal show. I was thinking of a name that maybe like I could open and close with it, but I couldn't think of anything at the exact moment right now. So of course you can always change it. So I'll say modal show, and that's gonna be a function here. So I'll say parentheses like that. And I'll say this dot modal equals true, and that'll show it. Now if um, modal trigger, that's what I'm going with, modal trigger. Okay, so we'll go back up to our thing. It says modal trigger. This needs to take some parentheses and it needs to take a parameter. I'm gonna say that the parameter is true. So this is gonna set it to true. So now we'll scroll down here and it takes the status. And then I'll say if the status is equal to the string of true, then set this dot modal to true. And if you don't do that, else essentially, this dot modal is false. And we'll spell false correctly. There we go. All right, so now I can use that same exact modal trigger. Where is that modal trigger? Here. And I can do it on that close button. So here's our close button. There's our modal trigger. We can set this to false because that'll never be true. Of course, it'll always default, but I like to just do that in case I need it later on. Okay, so now I refresh the page. I click the plus and it doesn't open. What's going on here? So if we go back to our code here and say modal trigger is true, that looks good. Passes it down over to modal trigger, which is status. Does the status equal true? Yeah, then this dot modal is equal to true, else this dot modal is equal to false. And here's our modal. So times like this, we'll open up our inspector, click on our console, and looks at this, we have an error. Property method modal is not defined on instance, but referenced during rendering. Oh, that's no good. So modal here is referenced in, look where I put it. I put it inside new cat. You probably knew that and you were like, Trevor, wrong place. Anyways, modal false is right there now. And now if we click on this plus, it pops open. We'll say the cat's name is tunes. Color is black and white. Capitalize that and I'll just say regular. We'll click add new and, oh, it doesn't close this. It'd be great if it just automatically closed. Well, how would I do that? Well, that's pretty easy. We can say this dot modal is a false whenever we add a cat. So here we push the cat and then right after it, we can say this dot modal equals false. So if we refresh this now, click on the plus, we'll add it one more time. We'll say tunes color is black and white and regular. And we'll say add new cat and it closes. Maybe we want to show a success or do something there. Anyways, this episode's getting a little long, so let's break it into the next one and finish styling our cat app with Tailwind.